We can now, I think, uh, uh, continue with the next presentation about the overview of forest certification. So now we're going to go deeper in the how the forest certification is is functioning and what are the different forest certification scheme, whether legal or uh, sustainable. So first of all, how the forest certification is functioning, and 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 first of all, what is the origin of forest certification? Uh, the forest certifications. Uh, find its roots in the 80s when the pe when people are starting to be concerned about the, 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 the forest and uh, problem of uh, many issue about forest, about deforestation, uh, heavy pollution, erosion, desertification, and so on. So during this period, there was a kind of boycott of tropical wood to avoid such, uh, such an issues. But it uh, rapidly came that the boycott was not a solution because it was not ending the conversion to agriculture, agricultural land. It slowed down the development of, uh, of tropical producing countries and mainly uh, southern producing countries. Uh, the uh, market uh, decided to choose other materials like uh, concrete, aluminium and so on, which are not so ecological as well. So it was not a solution. And during this, uh, and from this period, there was a, a kind of uh, awareness about uh, the certification, uh, the, uh, about the forest issues and forest uh, management. Uh, and there was different summits like Rio summit or different uh, um, conference about the forest management. And during this period, there was two kind of initiative or tools which burst. Uh, regarding the forest management, the sustainable, sustainable forest management and legality and, and fighting against illeg illegal wood. There was some private and voluntary processes like forest certification and also institutional market impacting policies like FLECT action plan, LACI Act in the United States and other initiative in other countries in the world like in Australia, Japan and so on. So the first very, uh, the first uh, main initiative raised in 1994 with the creation of FSC followed by PFC and then the institutional tools. So the, the certification scheme um, rooted in the concept of sustainable development, meaning a process which is able to find a, a balance between economic and social and environmental issues uh, in order to uh, to get uh, something which is um, relevant for these three components, and the certification was a, uh, is a tool which has been designed uh, for forests uh, in order to guide the markets. It is a num it is a market tool to impact the way of managing the forest at the origin, and enable to uh, come uh, for, go, go, uh, to come back from the product, the final product to the forest, the certification, the forest certification schemes uh, laid on the uh, way to identifying the wood to help the consumer to choose the good wood, the wood coming from well-managed forest or legal forests. So the, the, the specific purpose of forest certification it to, is to attest the quality of the forest management. This quality should could be sustainable or legal. This is two level of the quality evaluation of the forest management and to help the consumer to choose the better products. So it means that uh, there is an audit of the forest activities directly on site to verify the compliance to requirements about sustainable or legal management. And what well, well, it means to transfer this information from the forest to the final consumer it's to link the forest certification to the consumer along the supply chains, which could be very complicated. We will see that after. By auditing the trading or the processing companies uh, to verify trustability of certified wood inside, this, uh, in the, inside these companies. And a system to uh, mark the product with kind of labels in order to identify them uh, when the consumer wants to buy a final product. So this is something to uh, illustrate the two level or two type of certification there is in forest certification scheme. There is first of all the 
forest certification scheme at the level of the forest, which certifies the way of the forest, the management of the forest. It means that the products coming from the forest are able to be labeling and identified as such. And then all the different steps in the supply chain, we are here in the very simplistic uh, supply chain, all the supply chains must be certified and the products can be identified as certified until the final consumer to help him to choose the good product. A consumer, when he's buying a certified material, meaning a material with or product with a label or a logo, is able to know that this food is coming from a forest which has been legally or sustainably managed. So let's talk about the forest management certification. So the first part of forest certification scheme. The target of such certification is, of course, the forest manager, forest owner, uh, logging companies, uh, association uh, uh, owned some forests, and timber companies when they are in charge to managing them. This, this uh, operator has to be certified if they want to sell certified products. So the means of this forest management certification is to make field audits in the forest itself to verify the compliance with some requirements which are described in the forest management standard. About this forest management standard, as we said previously, this is a set of requirements which usually addresses a large wide range of economic, environmental, social, technical aspect of the forest management, specifically uh, for the sustainable forest management. And usually these standards are presented in the kind of uh, different level of requirements, which name are principles, criteria, and indicators. The more we are going uh, deeper in the details, uh, we are going to the level, uh, indicators level to have some requirements we are, uh, which are more uh, applicable on the field. If we are comparing forest management set standards for legal certification on, on left, and for sustainable forest management certification on the right. Usually in legal certification standards, we find this is, a, this is the aim of the legal certification to verify the legality. So all the um, thematic, uh, the legal thematics which should be covered are described in the legal certification standards. And it's usually cover the legal existence of the company, the right of access to the resource and harvesting, the tax and fees, forest management and logging operation, environment, worker, worker rights and third party and local community rights. And there is also usually requirements about traceability of certified products, control of illegal activities carried out by third parties, and some requirements about management system. Regarding a sustainable forest management standard, we found all the legal evaluation in one specific principle. Okay, this is the very first uh, level of requirements in the forest in the SFM standard. This is the compliance with the law, and there is many a lot of other requirements we are, which are going above the minimum legal requirements about working and living condition, about uh, the forest management plan, which would be sustainable, uh, about how to implement and monitor the operation to, to reduce the risk of damage on the ecosystem and the forests, to reduce the impact, uh, the environmental and social impact. So it's going usually above the, level, the minimum legal requirements. So a few comments about these two types of such standard, the legal standard and the sustainable standard. Uh, usually the main legal forest, uh, legality forest certification scheme covered the five legal areas of EUTR, the, uh, the right to access, the uh, logging operations, tax and fees, commerce and trade, and so on. It is usually cover all this area and what is the difference? It's the level of detail, details uh, of the requirements concerning these five level uh, of area. And usually the level of requirements depends on the level of the requirements of the national regulatory frameworks. But even 
with that, usually in practice, the audit and the checks which are doing uh, which are doing on the field by the certification body and the auditors usually go beyond the strict national legality or lo local government checks. Meaning, for example, uh, if there is requirement about uh, the, the the low low impact. Um, uh, reduce impact logging, for example. Sometimes there is few words in legal framework about uh, the company have to apply the uh, the reduced impact logging, and no more detailed. In the set legality certification standard, usually this inf this requirement is very uh, deeply uh, verified on the field uh, during the logging operation. If there is clear procedure and a way to minimize the risk of impact on the forest and so on. So even the, 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 the information is very likely mentioned in the legal framework. During this audit, the, the, the control are, are, are clearly beyond what is usually controlled if we are speaking about low governance countries. In the SFM certificate uh, and in the SFM standard, as I said, the very first rule of an SFM standard is to comply with the national regulation, meaning it includes all, all which have been done during a kind of uh, legality certification scheme. And usually the, 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 the compliance with law and regulation, it is one principle or one criterion in the uh, main SFM standard, like in FSC or PEFC. The other requirements, as we said, about environmental, social, and so on, which, uh, which are going beyond the legality, are always assessed on the basis of what is legally required. The certification never uh, went against the law. It's not a substitute to the law. And what we can observe that usually the legality requirements are less detailed in SFM certification, because usually this is one big principle saying that the Company should be uh, in, in comply with should comply with the legal requirements, and in in legality certification scheme, usually the, these requirements are more detailed because this is a core of the of the of the standard. But it doesn't mean that the evalu evaluation will be different on the field. Talking about the uh, chain of custody, chain of custody, which is a second part of the forest certification scheme in order to transfer the information of the certification of, of the forest to the consumer. So the, the, the aim is to ensuring that the wood or the wood fiber or the non-wood for forest product, but coming from the forest, contain in a product or a product line originates from certified forests. It means that all entities in the supply chain must be certified. And what are we calling as a link uh, in the supply chain for certification? It's each time there is action of purchasing or selling, meaning each time there is an invoice. When a company trading or processing uh, buying, purchase certified wood and receive an invoice for its supplier, then selling its product to a client and, and issue it an invoice, this is one link. It's considered like one entity. It means one certificate. And this applies also for the trading companies, trading activities without physical possession. Though you know there is some trading activities, meaning that the trading companies is based in Europe and it's purchasing wood in Cameroon and selling in UK without seeing and, and taking physically possession of the product. But as he is legally and commercially owner of the product by purchasing and selling it, he should be certified. In this case, the certification, certification will be more a documentary audit, but he should be certified and get a certificate and a certificate code in order to sell this product as certified. So about chain of custody, who, uh, which organisms are the target of uh, the chain of custody? It is all companies trading or processing certified wood and, and wood fibers. The mean for certification, uh, chain of custody certification is to audit uh, the companies on site or documentary, if we are talking about activities without physical possession to verify the compliance with the requirements of another standard, which is the chain of custody standard. 
Usually the chain of custody standards are very close to one certification scheme to another one. The PFC, the FSC, OLB, legal standard, legal source standard, and so on, regarding chain of custody requirements, usually uh, address the same, uh, uh, the same issues. Usually you find in the chain of custody standard, the chain of custody method, meaning the ac accounting method, how to, to control and, 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 and monitor the, the quantity and the certified material itself in, in the company and in the, in the processing process. There is some general requirements about the scope, the product groups, the source, how to verify the sourcing, how to identify the input and output, the volume uh, account control, and how to sell and deliver the product. There is also management system requirements, meaning the defining procedure, defining an organization, responsibilities, training the people in the company to implement the traceability. And there is also a requirement for non-certified product in case of mixing, and we will come to that later. And of course, the labeling requirements, how to, uh, uh, to use the label on products to sell them as certified. Here is, uh, here are the three main accountable uh, 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 chain of custody methods, which are usually used in the different type of chain of custody standard. The very first one, this is a segregated, segregated wood flow, meaning the physical separation or transfer in FSC. It means that at any moment, the non-certified wood could be mixed with certified wood, meaning there is no, no mix of the different uh, categories of supplies. It's, uh, this kind of uh, method is used in order to sell 100% certified products. The second uh, accountable method is a percentage mass of, mass of total wood flow. It is what we usually name the credit method. It means that there is certified wood and there is another category of wood of supply which is which name controlled wood in fsc or um, controlled sources for pfc or acceptable wood in OLB and so on all or men lot most of uh, certification scheme define some specific requirements about a non-certified product which can enter into a, certif a final certified product because it is too complicated because of the processing to separate the, 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 the inputs. It's possible to mix certified wood with non-certified wood, but this non-certified wood should uh, fulfill some specific requirements of verification. So in this method, there is part which is certified, part which is controlled, and it's come together into the process line. And at the end, the company can sell a, 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 a part of this uh, production as certified, 100%, but mixed, because in the final products, you will, you, you are not able to see if there is wood coming, the, the wood coming from the certified supply and the wood coming from the controlled wood supply. And the last method, it is a percentage of total wood flow. The percentage method, meaning, meaning for example, the, the input is 70% certified, meaning that it is a mixed, uh, it is a mix with a, a minimum level of, certificate, of certified materials. All the wood are coming into the process or to the company. And it means that you can sell all the all the production with a, the same percentage, the same percentage that the, than the input. Again, the part which is, we don't know which one is non-certified, but the, the one which is non-certified is always controlled. So it, there is something that you have to understand that it is not because a, a company is chain of custody certifying that it means that all the product itself, it's selling, are certified. For example, a company can be chain of custody certified and have two lines of production. One line is certified, one line is with certified materials, and one line is with non-certified materials. 
It's really important to understand that if you are supplying wood from a certified company, a chain of custody certified company, it doesn't mean that all the wood or the product it will, it will supply to you are uh, certified. And another point is uh, that you have to be very vigilant is that all certification scheme allow to mix certified material with non-certified materials. But this non-certified should be controlled and the level of verification for this controlled wood may, var may vary between the different certification scheme. And uh, you have to understand that in a company which is chain of custody certified, but for a partial production, the auditor will check very accurately the flow of the certified product, starting from the entrance in the company during to all the process until the, 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 the selling point. And you will not have a specific look in the line which is not concerned by certification product. It will have a look if you will have a look if the certified products are coming into the same line, and you will check if there is proper procedure in order to clean the line between one certified production and one uncertified production. But it will not verify the origin or uh, yeah the origin of the non-certified wood if it is not included in a certified production. That's why it is important to very identify in your supplier what what is the scope of its chain of custody certification. Uh, and if there is other type of, of production which, which is not included in the scope of the chain of custody certification. So in practice, it's, it's, it could be really complicated because uh, we know how the supply chain is working in, 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 in the wood, uh, wood sector. One company may source product from different type of suppliers, different type of species, different, different type of products. Uh, even in the in the certification supply uh, in the certified supply chain, there is different claims, meaning uh, wood certified, controlled wood, recycled recycled uh, wood. So that's in, inside inside the certified uh, supply chain, there is also different type of of products. Uh, depending on the level of processing, it could be difficult to uh, to to coming back to the to the to the origin. You have to understand that the, the chain of custody certification will um, certify the traceability of the certified product in a company. But it will not allow you to uh, uh, verify the, all the supply chains. The requirements in chain of custody uh, certification require to identify the origin, the country of origin, and the uh, species uh, of the product. But it is not compulsory to, um, to, to track to the until uh, to track the different uh, step in the supply chain, meaning to identify the different suppliers from the last one until the forest. It means that uh, when you when you are using certification in your due diligence, you still need to identify the different steps in the supply chain if it is necessary, for example, for high-risk country. Another point which can, can sometimes be a little bit confused for uh, people. In EUTR, we are talking about due diligence system. And uh, the purpose of our webinar is to explain how to use the certification, the, the third party certification, within a due diligence system in order to answer to the UTR. But we can also hear about due diligence system in other situation and due diligence may also be used inside some certification scheme. It means that you have to be very clear that the due diligence system is not a specific concept or a definition or something which is uh, which owns to the UTR. Due diligence system is an approach of uh, how to manage the risk, which type of risk we are talking about. So EUTR, uh, due diligence system is not something specific to EUTR. It is an approach which can be used in various situations. For example, when a certified, a chain of custody certified company um, supply certified wood, 
and non-certified wood, but want to mix these both supplies, as I said, he needs to uh, verify the, uh, the non-certified wood to see if it is at the uh, level of controlled wood. And usually in the main certification scheme, the way to verify the controlled wood, it is applying the uh, due diligence approach. In the FSA standard for controlled wood, these are, there's, you can find the similar steps than in, due, than in the due diligence, collecting information, risk analysis, reduction of the risk. In the PEFC uh, chain of cost standard about the controlled sources, they, they name that the, the PEFC due diligence system. So even in certification scheme, the due diligence approach can be used. There is also a situation. This is a situation we are talking to, to uh, today. An operator wanted to place on the European market uh, a product may apply due diligence in order to be in accordance with EUTR. So in this case, due diligence system approach is used to be comply to comply to the EUTR requirements. This is something regulatory. Another situation, still in the in the EUTR process. You know that there is some monitoring organizations, which are organizations agreed by the European community to help the operator to apply the EUTR. These monitoring organizations, like uh, Preferred by Nature, Bureau of Veritas, HCB, uh, the, the French Federation, and so on, these monitoring organizations usually develop their own due diligence system to propose them to propose this, to propose it to the operator to be able to apply uh, and to fulfill to the uh, EUTR. So monitoring organization develop their own due diligence system according to EUTR requirement, but this is another due diligence system. Another situation, uh, individually, some operators may apply the due diligence approach in order to verify something to their, uh, to their uh, supplier. It is, uh, an approach which can be used in, in diff for different purposes, for example, verifying, I don't know, the quality of a wood, and you will apply the same level of uh, approach, meaning collecting information, meaning analysis the risk that the product is not fulfilling some requirements, and then mitigate the risk by, I don't know, verifying uh, the, the, the supplier and so on, even if it is not in the case of EUTR. And last situation, there is also possibility for an operator, a company, to uh, make its own due diligence approach certified by a third party. There is due diligence certification, such as legal source or pre uh, from, uh, of, uh, preferred by nature. This is a certification to guarantee that the company is able to manage the risk of illegality. It is something which is voluntary. It is not something which is required by the uh, UTR, for example. It is, all, of course, a good tool for the company to fulfill with the UTR requirements, but you can find a certification of due diligence. The, what I am explaining you that is meaning that due diligence may be used in, in different process by different tools or initiative, but this, the approach is the same but it's not something specific to the UTR. And the final thing I want to, to explain that the, the, it doesn't exist an EUTR certificate. We can find a due diligence certification, but not an EUTR certificate. If a supplier is providing you an EUTR certificate, it's a fake, it doesn't ex exist. So now let's go through the different forest certification scheme that it, that it, which, uh, which exists. First of all, uh, a, a, a little scheme to explain the difference between voluntary tools and regulatory tools, which are mandatory. On the left, this is, this is all the voluntary tools, which are the certification, whether they are legal or sustainable. On the right, this is all initiative, uh, regulatory, regulatory initiative, like public procurement policy or all other regulation uh, fighting the, or prohibiting uh, illegal wood on their markets. There is also an institutional uh, initiative regarding more sustainable um, 
sustainable level like CITES or public procurement policy, but main of the institutional initiative are against illegal logging. It is, it's, it's really important to, to situate where the certification is um, uh, acting. So there is a lot of certification scheme and with a lot of logo and sometimes it's difficult, difficult to not be confused about what are the guarantee and what are the, what this certification or the schemes are covering. There is sustainable management scheme and for now there is two international sustainable forest management scheme which are FSC, PEFC. There is only these two ones. But inside the PEFC, which is a, systems, uh, a system which endorses some national certification scheme, you can find a national uh, certification scheme like SFI in North America, CERFLO in Brazil, NTCC in Malaysia. All these certification schemes exist by themselves. So you, it, could, it could happen to have a product with some logo with uh, this uh, 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 schemes, but all these certification schemes are endorsed by PFC, meaning that product which is SFI certified may carry on uh, PFC labels. Concerning legality verification scheme, there is the mains we we talk about uh, we are talking about are legal source from preferred by nature OLB from Bureau Veritas, TLV from Control Union, and um, legal harvest from SCS. And there is also type of logo you can find which are not legality verification schemes, like GFS, which is more a consultant office, or the former SGS system, which is not used anymore, or the uh, carbon neutral uh, of uh, preferred by nature, or CORAT, or some, some other initiative. Be careful, because sometimes it's maybe confused. These other uh, product or system are not uh, functioning like a certification scheme. This scheme is also to uh, better understand what are the scope and the guarantee of the different tools existing about forest management. This is the level of guarantee here on the top, no starting from no insurance to the guarantee of a system, sustainable forest management certification. And with, with, between these two levels of guarantee, starting from the origin to the legal verification and legal certification, you can see here the, the, the scope uh, of the, the main tools like certification and, and, and EUTR and VPA process. FSC and PFC, so the Sustainable Forest Management Scheme, cover all the guarantee until the, until the Sustainable Forest Management. Certification like OLB, TLV, Legal Shows, and its annex covering all forest legality certificate uh, until forest leg legality certification. Control wood, PBFCDDS, meaning all the requirements for non-certified wood are going just to, uh, to some information for legality and origin, but are not third party verified. So that's why it's not covering this level of guarantee. EUTRDDS, it can, it can go far. It depends on the level of the, the system which is developed by the, the operator. And flex VPA are uh, at the level of timber origin and legality verification because there is no third party verification unless exception in Indonesia with the national certification scheme. So let's talk about now about the main certification scheme, the FSC. I will not get too much in details, but this is the first one to, 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 uh, which have been created uh, in 1994 in, 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 in Oaxaca in Mexico. Um, it is a body which is organized in three types of chamber, economic, environmental, and social, in order to bring together all the, 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 the concern of all different parties. And FSA has this, this developed a principle and criteria for forest management, meaning this is the main um, structure which is used to evaluate the forest all over the world. But FSC required to adapt this principle in criteria at the le local level. These are the 10 FSC principles, which are dealing with environmental, social, economic issues. But first of all, you have to note that there is the very first principle, which is compliance with the law. It means that this is here the level of the legality certification, and then 
FSC is, is going beyond with all other type of requirements. Few information, few data about, about uh, FSC certification in the world. Certified our area is more than 200 uh, billion of hectare, and there is uh, almost 50,000 of chain of custody certificates. And in the map here, you see the, the green, the dark green, it is where there is the most certificate or uh, forest uh, certified areas. PFC, it is also a non-profit organization established in the, 80s, the 90s, in 1919. 1990, also organized with three membership chambers. But the difference with FSC, it is an umbrella organization which endorses national forest certification scheme. Uh, up to date, there is 48 endorsed national certification scheme in different countries in the world. The development of the, the forest management standard is based on the benchmark, the PFC Sustainable Forest Management Benchmark, which is, which is kind of guidelines, but it is not a, a standard like a FSC principal F and criteria. And this, guy, this benchmark has to be used by the local, the national certification scheme to elaborate its own forest management standards. Few words about the main, um, uh, not requirements, but orientation, which is uh, provided in the FSC forest, man, uh, forest management, um, PFC forest management benchmark. There is different uh, thematic. The requirements about operation are covered by some cri six criteria about the different uh, operations uh, requirements which should uh, which should be addressed in the standards about forest resource and so on biological and, and socioeconomic so we can find again the different uh, the, the three components of the sustainable development economic uh, develop, uh, environmental and social issues but you have also not have to note that there is also uh, guidelines about the compliance requirements according to the legal uh, framework, national legal framework. So this is again a basis to be legally uh, compliant. Few words, so certified area for PEFC is more than 300 uh, billion. There is 12, more than 12,000 chain of custody certification. Uh, you see here where are located the main uh, certificate, certified area, and mainly in the north part of the world and in South America. It's starting in, in Central Africa. Uh, there is one certificate in Gabon with the PAFC Gabon. And there's an initiative to develop a, a, a Congo Basin uh, a PFC scheme, a regional uh, PFC scheme, which is uh, on, 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 uh, ongoing to be endorsed. Few words about the difference approach between FSC and PFC. The FSC has a top-down approach. As I said, FSC defines the uh, FSC principal criteria, uh, principal and criteria, and some in, uh, international generic indicators. And it has to be adapted locally with a process which is really clearly defined and including stakeholders. But the the, the core the core requirements are defined by FSC. In PFC, we are uh, uh, more than in a bottom-up approach, meaning that PFC gives some guidelines for uh, elaborating uh, sustainable forest management standards, but the creation is done by the local initiatives according to the guidelines of PEFC. Of course, the two C schemes endorse or validate the, the final documents, but the, 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 the approach is not the same. It's coming from the FSC for the FSC and from the national in initiative for PEFC. Let's talk about the certi legality certification scheme. The three mains uh, which does exist are OLB from Bureau of Veritas. The OLB is attesting the legality of logging operation at the forest level and the origin of the certified products up to the first processing and the traceability after of the certified timber into the different supply chain. There is two standards, one for logging company, so at the forest level, and one for the uh, chain of custody. The uh, TLV, uh, the 
timber legality verification of control union uh, as uh, is a certification with three uh, three purposes certifying the mitigation of the risk of illegal logging so certifying the due diligence system of a company certifying the legality of logging operation and certifying the timber traceability this is a chain of custody so the, there's this, this uh, system which have three uh, three certification in one let's say like this the legal source is uh, the one developed by preferred by nature which is mostly a, a certification which attests the due diligence system performance and the mitigation of the risk of illegality. And in this system, there is one appendix dealing about uh, operation in forest at the forest level, but legal source uh, is not presented as kind of a, legality, a forest legality certification, but better system certification about the, the way of the company is mitigate and manage the risk of illegality. Few words about two uh, about the last confusion that can exist uh, when you are supplying wood and specifically from uh, Central Africa. Uh, this is a confusion which may appear with some VPA, the flaked VPA, voluntary partnership agreements, which are these uh, agreements which are concluded between uh, European Union and producing countries. In some VPAs, flaked VPAs, uh, for example, Congo and Cameroon, Republic of Congo and Cameroon. There is uh, a step into the uh, timber legality insurance system, which issue a legality certificate. And it may be confused with a third party legality certificate. This legality certificate issue inside the VPA process is based on the verification of the country legality grid, because each country has to define a legality grid to define the legality. But it is not a proof, uh, a full proof of legality because it has to be um, compli uh, com uh, added with a, a traceability verification in order to issue the flex licenses. So it is kind of first step before the flex licenses. So it has to not be confused between them. And uh, also, what is very important, a legality certificate in, in the, the within the VPA process is not third party verified. So it is not the same level of verification than, than a legality certificate issued by a third party uh, certification like OLB, TLV or, or legal source and so on. And this is the same for the Indonesia scheme, the national certification scheme, the, the SVLK. Uh, which is a national certification uh, within the uh, flag VPA of Indonesia. Again, it is not an, an independent certification scheme like a uh, private certification scheme. Okay, we finish with this overview of certification scheme. I hope it's, things are clear, but we will see in the case studies uh, some uh, way to get, go deeper in some explanation of some specificity of the, of the, of the certification for certification functioning.